Hey Dreamers, this is Jay. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's time for me to do my July reads as far as my favorites and then of course wrap up with the ones that weren't so magical. Anyway, I'm starting off with Wolf Song by TJ Klune. And when I say I love this book, it was so beautiful and it was so magical and I just want to get into it with you all. So the synopsis is Ox Oxnard is the weird name. Oxnard Matheson was 12 when his father taught him that Ox wasn't worth anything and people would never understand him. Then his father left. Ox was 16 when the energetic Bennett family moved in next door harboring a secret that would change him forever. The Bennets are shapeshifters. They can transform into wolves at will. Drawn to their magic loyalty and enduring friendships, Ox feels a gulf between the extraordinary new world and the quiet life he's known, but he finds an ally in Joe, the youngest Bennett boy. Ox was 23 when murder came to town and tore a hole in his heart. Violets flared, tragedy split the pack, and Joe left town, leaving Ox behind. Three years later, the boy is back, except now he's a man, charming, handsome, but haunted, and Ox can no longer ignore the song that howls between them. Y'all, when I tell y'all this was the most beautiful story ever, um, this is definitely probably so far my favorite book of the year, and I would not be surprised if it was my favorite book of the entire year. It was so magical. I loved, first of all, Ox himself was just so sweet and so kind. I really hated the way that his dad made him feel about himself because he did bring it up a lot in questioning his worth um, and it just he had a lot of self-doubt about that especially when the Bennett family comes and they just accept him as one of them and bring him brings him into the fold and everything like that and he's just always constantly wondering if he is worthy of that kind of friendship and love and camaraderie whatever and it's kind of heartbreaking because he is so sweet he's just such a kind person and so I just loved him and then we have Joe who is the youngest Bennett boy and he pops up on the scene and it is it, immediately you're like I like this kid I love him he is so cute um he is so exuberant and full of energy and endless curiosity and I, I loved him immediately Ox is very resilient and strong and gets wrapped up into the Bennett family and he's finally getting the nurturing outside of his mom because his mom has always been in his quarter but getting the nurturing that he needs and deserves um, honestly um, what I love about this story is just it's so beautifully told um, there's a lot a lot of repetition but I feel like that was more so to um, like I think it's used as to acknowledge like a thought and then to solidify the thought and then to reinforce it so it's the thought is a thing and becomes something real and in this world and acknowledged and I just enjoyed it and so yeah I definitely had to get this down is if I could rate it more than five stars I would but I'm on a five star rating system in this thing here but yeah so what I'm doing is just getting um, some washi tape down here of course I put the cover of the book oh the book is beautiful I did get the Barnes and Noble special edition so and in paperback because I, I prefer paperbacks um, but it, it's decorated like the edges are de it's just so pretty like all the entirety of this book just the way it looks the presentation and the contents of it is just magical love it so much and so I'm getting that down I did use these alphas I got from once I had placed the scrapbook.com order at some point and they give free gifts at times and that one was the free gift so I decided to use those alphas um, anything that I can link in the making of this spread will be below in the description box so you can check there so yeah anyway I'm just using some construction paper I actually had to buy a new pack to get a the color specifically that I was looking for to match the um, book cover and all the rest 
rest of the stuff and then I found some images online that basically were of this um, series which is the Green Creek series um, by again TJ Klune this was my first TJ Klune book and when I tell you I loved it so I have definitely picked up more I did get the second in this series which is Raven Song and I did get these Barnes and Noble special editions so they could match um, and then I also got something about the Cerulean Sea I can't remember the entire title at this moment so I'm definitely looking forward into reading more TJ Klune because this was just fantastic anyway um, so I'm getting these down. This is depicting, and I just found some artwork all over the internet. Uh, I am not trying to sell this stuff, so just using it for my journal. Um, and the scene here down here is just depicting Ox and Joe's first meeting when Ox was on his way home um, from work. And then uh, the Bennett family and Joe just kind of came out of nowhere and jumped up on him. And it was so cute and was like, uh, uh, what? what is going on the smell like you you smell like candy canes and pine cones and epic and awesome and it was just so cute and I love this so much and so getting all that down really trying to decide if I want pack 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 again repetition a lot of repetition in this um book which was I I enjoyed it because as I said it was I felt like it was just solidifying what was going on the thoughts and kind of bringing the thoughts or whatever to life <laughs> and so yeah I'm using that and I decided to just use pack 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 at the bottom and then of course I have ox there kind of running with the wolves and then the wolves curled up curled up at the top and the Bennett family let's see if I can remember there is of course um, the parents and then there is a brother-in-law or um, the brother of the husband okay and then they have four boys three boys they have three boys and so yeah and they are just so loving and welcoming and everything like that because ox is of course his his dad leaves he's a deadbeat um and so it's just him and his mom and him he and his mom kind of make the best of things and then he also has support from this guy um Lord, why is his name escape me right now? And I love him. He's one of my favorite characters in the book, too. Um, but he, he does have support from this other guy. And he owns a garage. And so he ends up giving him a job. And that's where he was working at as a young kid um, once his dad left. Because he needed some, you know, he needed to help with the bills and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, so yeah, I'm just getting all of that written down. And then I think I do add a couple of quotes from the book which is one is it's always the ones who are the quietest who often have the greatest things to say and yes I think we will be friends and that was from Mark who's the brother-in-law um, and he came to actually scout out the place before the Bennett's came and moved in and I just love the Bennett's they are so special and so sweet and kind and generous and thoughtful and it's just oh, this, this story is just really really everything and then the next one is again I kind of have a little bit of it but like Joe was just immediately enamored with Ox when he saw him um, and there is Ox is older than him so like I think when Ox is 16 Joe was like 9 or 10 or something like that I can't remember but anyway but uh, as I said Joe was immediately enamored like who is this who is this and he's like you gotta smell him and when he's talking to his parents he has dragged Joe home with him um, and he's like you gotta smell him and then tell me why it's all candy canes and pine cones and epic and awesome it is just such a cute little story and I loved it anyway I'm getting some little embellishments um, spread around and that'll be it for this particular spread I'm using these stars I picked up from Michaels um, during the Christmas season and um, things were half off it's just a bottle of silver stars now the way they are in here they are so compacted that I thought some of them were silver and some of them were black and once I spilled them out onto my thing I realized none of these are black they're all silver it's just the way that they're in here that makes it look like some of them are black 
because <laughs> I was surely about to use them black ones. But I tried to not not to get overzealous with uh, the spreading of the stars here, because I can really go overboard with stuff like that. And there's a, the page is you know kind of full anyway. And so yeah, I left it at that, and that pretty much wraps this one up. I do get in a little bit of color here and do some highlighting just to pull that stuff off the page and then I will be moving on to my next read that I really love for the month. So the next story I'm highlighting that gets its own spread is Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. This is the second in the Part of Your World series. I have since read all three and I really, really enjoyed Yours Truly and um, Just for the Summer. Part of Your World was just okay for me, um, but I did want to highlight this one because it was just so cute and it was to totally something up my alley here. So Alexis was the main FMC in Part of Your World. This story is about her friend, Dr. Brianna Ortiz, and it just says, Dr. Brianna Ortiz's life is seriously flatlining. Her divorce is just about finalized. Her brother's running out of time to, time to find a kidney donor. And that promotion she wants, oh, that's probably going to the new man doctor who's already registering 80 freaking 7 on Brianna's pain in my ass scale. But just when all systems are set to hate, Dr. Jacob Maddox completely flips the game by sending Brianna a letter. And it's a really good letter, like the kind that proves that Jacob isn't actually Satan. Worse, he might be this fantastically funny and subversive, subversive, can I say this, subversively likable guy who's terrible at first impressions because suddenly he and Bree are exchanging letters, sharing lunch dates in her sob closet and discussing the merits of freakishly tiny horses but when Jacob decides to give Brianna the best gift imaginable a kidney for her brother she wonders just how she can re resist this quietly sexy doctor especially when he calls in a favor she can't refuse and so yeah, that is the synopsis of this book I will tell you I, though I love this book it was hard reading it um, simply because there are themes of of course like kidney transplant and illness and stuff like that and I have gone through that myself um so I know how that feels I know about all of that and it's it wasn't pleasant it was not a pleasant time in my life um and it just kind of stirred up all of these feelings in me but I imagine that that is probably a good thing it's something I need to face and think about sometimes and and just thank God that I am where I am now um, feeling a lot better after my my only my own kidney transplant and whatnot. So yeah, it was it was a tough read, but it was such a good read and so worth it. Um, a lot of people really liked the part of your world. As I said to me, that one was just me, and I really really loved the this one and the interactions between them. First of all, the letters. Ugh, I am such a stationary. Put it on paper write out my feelings type of girly so the whole exchanging letters back and forth type of thing really did it for me um and then you've really got to see who who they both were within the contents of their letters um and poor jacob he is just anxiety so he didn't make really make the uh, a good first impression on brianna and then she's dealing with hard stuff um with her brother and i can imagine how that might be um, I, I will say that I think I had a more positive attitude and outlook on the whole thing than her brother did I mean he just kind of gave up on life and was like whatever um, <clears throat> until because he had a really rare blood type that he needed um, as far as kidney getting a kidney and so they were thinking it was going to be almost impossible to do that or whatever but he just kind of checked out on life just checked out of everything I checked out of a lot of stuff, but I never gave up hope. I knew it was coming, um, and I was like, every. I always tell my mom and my family because they're the ones that's supporting me that everything's gonna work out, everything's gonna be okay. Because I genuinely believe that um, everything that I've been through with the sickle cell and the transplant and all that kind of stuff, um, eventually 
I may have to go through tough shit <laughs> and at you know at some point, but eventually it all ends up to being okay and it ends up being fine. And I'm like, so um, that was very hard to read about because um, I don't know, I don't know, I, I don't know about that space personally myself, but I can understand how somebody can get there if that makes sense anyway the letters were just chef's kiss and when they finally graduated from letters to actually spending time together and hanging out i love their interactions the banter was top tier um abby jimenez really has a special way of presenting her characters and showing you who they are and bringing out their fears and doubts and strengths and weaknesses and and triumphs and all that kind of stuff and it's just beautiful to watch the journey of her characters together finding themselves while finding each other and finding love i really and jacob was everything i love 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 loved him um because some of us do suffer from social anxiety they don't we don't want to do it <laughs> we don't want to be out there uh with the people uh having to deal with the people these situations and all that kind of stuff and so I, I understand his anxiety behind that kind of thing because I don't, I'm not a, I'm not a big, um, you know, peopley person myself. I'm definitely, definitely on the introverted side of the spectrum. So yeah, this was really special and him just trying to get out of his comfort zone and put himself out there and all that kind of stuff. So it was beautiful. Brianna, I just, she's so headstrong and she's dealing with a lot, um, it's one thing i mean people don't often bring up the caretakers of people who are chronically ill or going through some kind of huge medical issue that's going to take time and effort and all of that kind of stuff but it's hard on them okay um it's hard they need support they need love they need all kinds of stuff and then too especially when they're dealing with the moods of the people they're caring for so i, I really could understand both perspectives here um, I'm really, really glad that there was a happy ending for everybody. Um, and I just, it was, it was a beautiful journey, um, watching them fall in love. The only thing that really bothered me about this book, which I still rated it for five stars, so it didn't bother me that much, I guess, um, was the assumptions, especially on Brianna's part, um, because they were kind of fake dating. I can't even remember how they ended up fake dating or whatever. But they both, of course, eventually really end up feeling for each other and wanting to be together. And Brianna just keeps making these assumptions. She sees one little thing and she, instead of, you know, opening her mouth and asking about about it, she just makes the assumption that, oh, well, this is it's this way. So this is probably not going to work out. And it it irked my nerves so bad and they kept carrying on with it it just went on too long with the false assumptions and not saying and not communicating about it and so i was just relieved when when there was finally some communication um so yeah anyway for the most part absolutely love this book adored it but um yeah it was it was great so i was definitely looking forward to reading just for the summer after reading this one um and it was it, again five star so yeah and these were my first abby jimenez books that i got into so definitely definitely will be reading more from her one of the other books that i read for the month was bride by ali hazelwood this is actually my first ali hazelwood book that i've read and it was pretty good i think i rated it three and a half stars um it wasn't like something to write home to mom about and it's just basically about this vampire uh, misery who is tasked by her family to marry into the wolf pack i can't remember the last name of the wolf pack right now i think it's moreland yeah um just you know, for what is it like peace between the species and all that kind of stuff and she has been like a bartering trip for this type of situation before she knows what it is and all of that kind of stuff but she finds herself attracted to um low and he is definitely attracted to her but she is not understanding that that's what's going on and so it's just funny to see how they relate to each other and all that kind of stuff she is very begrudging of caring for people so she begrudgingly cares for his um i mean she she 
cares for his like little sister when she meets but it's it's not her thing so she's like oh. and then like her uh that, that she has ulterior motives for agreeing to this thing and um her one of her friends went missing and she got the cat she don't like no cats or whatever but she's taking care of the cat because her friend loved the cat it's just it was pretty good okay just getting to know them and i just was not honestly i i kind of think ahead sometimes with these books and how things are going and whatnot but i didn't think ahead in this one and so i was kind of surprised by how it ended up although i will say one of the people one of the culprits of whatever was going on i will not say so i'm not spoiling anything um i did kind of guess that he was involved so um yeah anyway moving on again part of your world was the first book that i read by abby jimenez read that after bride again this one was just okay for me um i didn't really care for alexis i love daniel um but he was he's very much a golden retrie retriever type of dude i mean he was instantly smitten with alexis and that's perfectly fine or whatever um i feel like he was some at some time at some times a doormat for her um and she just would come in breeze in and out of his town whenever she wanted to and he was always accepting of her in whatever capacity he just wanted her in whatever capacity that he could have her and and she would never commit to anything but she would never tell him why and that's what really irked me about alexis and it just to me it came off as self-centered and selfish so he kind of when when there's this thing that happens he kind of just kind of gets thrown to the wolves and she never even bothered to warn him that hey this is what my life looks like and this is why i feel the way that i feel like at least say something to the boy you know what i'm saying and it's kind of an age gap too so it was just okay for me um i, I did give it three stars so it was it wasn't like trash or anything like that but it just some of it really bothered me and i was just like nah, nah. and you know alexis was selfish and daniel i loved him he was sweet and kind and thoughtful but i just wanted him to stand up and say look you gotta give me more information or something so anyway another book that i this one is funny because i actually started reading it on my kindle and then i finished it on audiobook um in spotify and it's all about love by bell hooks i've been wanting to read this for a while now and then i just i get this thing where i just i'll see the same thing repeatedly over and over and over again and this red book i kept seeing and i was like okay it's finally time for me to buy this and read this um so i did but i was a little bit disappointed in it i think i gave it a three it was okay it's not a bad book or anything like that i do feel like i would have um it would have been more beneficial to me had i read this book when i was in my um late teens or 20s um as it stands now i'm i'm much older than that <laughs> and so um a lot of the thoughts and themes and stuff like that in this book i'm already familiar with i've already kind of worked through this stuff myself i did find the latter chapters interesting and whatnot so that kind of gave it three right there so it was stuff that i hadn't really thought about in the way that she presented it in this book so i appreciated that but for the most part i feel like this was information that i already had and so yeah anyway another audiobook that i listened to uh for the month was home is where the bodies are um this was very interesting um it was about this family who were estranged um the mom was sick and everybody's been called home um once the mom passes away and so but there is a mystery about some stuff that has gone on in the past they find this tape um and it depicts this scene that involve their parents and this girl that went missing uh years ago and so the mystery kind of unravels from there and so it, it was pretty good uh this is by geneva rose this is my first one i think i gave this three and a half stars um because it was interesting it was good but i'm telling you by a certain point in the book the way somebody starts acting the way uh, or just maybe is what i was catching that they were saying and stuff like that i was like i know who did it I know what happened like I know the the basics of what happens because of course you don't always know the complete details but I was like I know why things kind of happened the way or what they saw is why they saw it that way oh, anyway I figured out who it was let's just put it that way and I was like yep uh when it all came to fruition yep there were some things that needed to tie together that 
um i wasn't quite sure of yet of course but it was a lot so but the actual culprit of who did what definitely picked it picked up on it so yeah anyway last book was fake it to till you make it this was um a book i found randomly in walmart when i was looking for something else um i unfortunately only gave this a two star it started out cute um this girl broke up with her boyfriend um and so she drove to this little small podunk town to try to start over and in west virginia of all places um but so yeah she finds this family that lives together this guy runs a vet she gets a job there yada 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 um as i said and of course it's the romance is between them will they won't they all that kind of stuff um as i said it started out cute but then there were some things that really started to irk me there was this one character and it's funny because i kind of like this character i want to know more about this character um but i don't know that i'm going to invest my time but anyway if there is a second book um however they kept saying you ain't never lie listen i ain't never in my life heard a cishead white male use that phrase okay that is just not that's a that is just not a phrase i've ever heard a straight white male use and especially not in that frequent freak not that frequently and there was a lot of stuff like that like aav aave phrases that characters that would not talk like that um were using and it just pissed me off <laughs> um i was like this is not realistic to me and then the third act there was this third act that was just absolutely ridiculous like n nobody would do this i don't think uh, it was just weird and so it just kind of threw me out of the story and i was like okay I'm, I'm just ready to get this over with this is not not good um and so but it was what's terrible about that is i'm interested in the second brother of this story but i don't know if i'm interested enough to actually read it when it comes out but anyway that wraps this up and i am doing a quick little flip through of everything right here i trust that you all have been safe and well if you like this content please consider liking subscribing and sharing and i'll catch you in the next one bye